Thanks. So I'm actually from Amazon Web Services. I've actually got another colleague of mine, Siva Kumar, who's from SAP, and I'm super excited to be here uh, to deliver the GRA, the Joint Reference Architecture, with you. Uh, we're uniquely positioned to talk to you about the Joint Reference Architecture because we have over 10 years of innovation jointly delivered with SAP for AWS customers, and that's over products and services the, like business technology platform that we'll talk to you about today. Also uh, about um, uh, Concur, Qualtrics, and the latest innovations around SAP HANA Cloud, uh, Business Innovation Cloud, and many, many more. Um, in the next slide, we actually refer to the business value that comes in from leveraging SAP Business Technology Platform. As customers, you know there's multiple inflection points as you are beginning your migration journey, and there's an opportunity for you to successfully deliver that through the latest go-to-market call Rise. Once you've successfully delivered your workloads into SAP on AWS, there's an opportunity to leverage the business technology platform to deliver new enriched data, uh, data analytics, access to data, and to build new enterprise services. Those services can be made available on the BTP marketplace and also on the AWS marketplace. In the next slide, we talk about the key business value of delivering on AWS. It's more than just servers, capacity, and instances. There's a value in providing resiliency, data recovery, and data access. And as you know, we have over 30 geographical regions, 96 availability zone. I wish through that because I'm excited to hand it over to Siva, who's going to dive deeper into the JRA. Siva? Thank you, Solat. Uh, we have been working with AWS on the joint reference architecture for the last several months. The focus is to bring SAP's business technology platform to AWS customers and the best practices around how to combine BTP services with AWS services. We broadly divided into three areas, or three pillars. Uh, at the bottom, you see data to value, where you would uh, see data warehouse cloud and analytics cloud, which helps you to understand how to bring SAP and non-SAP data sets together to leverage uh, value out of those existing investments. The next pillar is the um, integration and app development, where we uh, are uh, enriching BTP applications with AWS services like uh, Amazon SNS where you would be able to enable notifications, be it email, text, or uh, app notification. Last but not least, the platform foundation. Uh, here we articulate how you would be able to leverage SAP's uh, uh, BTP services like Launchpad and cloud integration and make it highly available. There's a lot to talk about uh, in the next 12 minutes. I'll probably run a little, little fast. But all of this information is already available publicly. All you need to do is just search for SAP AWS Reference Architecture in Google, and then you'll be able to get all the in-depth information. Now, Platform Foundation. Launchpad is the single point of entry for all SAP applications. Customers use it for their uh, employee self-service portal and whatnot. By default, it is uh, not highly available, so we partnered with AWS to bringing in Amazon Route 53 to make these services uh, highly available across different regions. Now, if you are a customer who have different instances running across uh, you know, Europe and Australia, if any instance have to go down for whatever reason, the Amazon Route 53 will redirect the traffic automatically to the different uh, uh, regions and the instances that are available so that your application is always highly available. That's not the only thing. You would be able to configure the Route 53 so that the traffic from you know, Australia and APJ region can be routed to the closest instance, whereas the rest of the world, be it Europe or uh, uh, North America traffic could be routed to the uh, instance that is much closer. So you would be able to do the geographic-based routing as well uh, with Route 53. The next one is a big one, which is the data, right? Uh, the central piece of this architecture is SAP's Data Warehouse Cloud. There are many different patterns here in this one slide. Uh, not everything can be compressed uh, uh, in, in the short time, but what I will do is I'll highlight some of these that you would probably be uh, running into mostly in your uh, uh, you know, business uh, scenarios. So the first one is, how do you bring SAP data and AWS data together for analytics? 
if you have your SAP data in S4 HANA or any of the SAP systems and your uh, you know, non-SAP data be uh, you know, in Redshift or Athena, you'd be able to leverage the data federation that's available to bring all of this data on the fly. Now, this is leveraged uh, in a way um, that is performant and cost effective so that you don't have to do uh, all the complex data pipelining and everything. Now, the second architecture pattern, which is represented in the, in the number five, is what happens if the data is more on the AWS side? How do you take some of the simpler data sets, like master data that sits in your S4, and augment your AWS data set that sits on the AWS side? So we are leveraging the data federation capability that sits inside Amazon Athena that connects back to Data Warehouse Cloud and helps you to access this data set as an external table inside Athena. This is really quick. You would be able to just configure in less than a uh, you know, few minutes, and then you'd be able to uh, use it, and not only use it within Athena, but also for all the downstream processing. The last and most commonly requested use case is how do I bring non-SAP data set for planning in SAP Analytics Cloud. For example, workforce planning. That needs some, in some cases, that needs data from your uh, Workday uh, instance, or sales planning or account planning for which you have to bring data from Salesforce. Now, we have outlined the architecture pattern that helps you to bring this non-SAP data set into Data Warehouse Cloud and bubble it to Analytics, SAP Analytics Cloud, for enterprise planning. This is going to be really powerful, uh, and we would be able to write it back as, back as well into their respective systems. Now, what's a value? First thing, the time to value is significantly shortened, and you have, uh, you have real time access to both SAP and non SAP data set. It's obviously lower TCO because you are getting rid of all the pipelines that you need to build to get the data from between different systems. And since data is not persisted anywhere outside, it is automatically GDPR compliant. Now, we talked about analytics and planning. What about machine learning? Well, we have released a FedML library that runs natively within SageMaker that lets you access SAP data set via Data Warehouse Cloud. This library will help uh, you uh, to train your model, deploy your model, and predict, and write the result back into your SAP system. So if you have, an, uh, for example, an IBP forecasting that needs to be done, and if you are using SageMaker, you don't have to export the data out anymore. Leveraging the FedML, you would be able to write within this SageMaker notebook access the IBP data set, train, and write it back. And we would be able to do that in a much more performant way because machine learning typically needs huge volume of data set. We have also outlined how you would be able to do it in a much quicker without having to kind of uh, uh, port all the data across these different systems. Now, the last one that I wanted to talk about is the application uh, integration. Here. We, our customers use CAP application for building um, uh, extension for our SAP systems. But there are some of the services that uh, in AWS that they really want to leverage because they are already using it for other uh, applications. In this case, this BTP uh, application is uh, helping customers to deduplicate their business partner in the system. So whenever a duplicate business partner is created, they wanted to send a notification to the respective administrators so that they can deduplicate whatever is not automatically deduplicated. So we have integrated with SNS. Now it will be sending you email and uh, text message. And if you needed, uh, needed uh, put, uh, send a push notification as well directly to your mobile phone so that you would be able to take action immediately. This is just one idea of how you could possibly integrate. You would be able to reuse it for all the extensions that you have already built as well. So we, we talked about a lot of patterns, but so what? 
what next for you guys, right? So if you are interested in trying out any of this uh, architecture pattern, SAP and AWS are willing to jointly work with you to build a proof of value and proof of concept in a span of like six to eight weeks at no cost. And we would also be able to work with you to leverage your existing credits or whatnot to bring and build it in your environment as well. And we would be able to articulate the value of BTP and AWS throughout this process. We work closely with you, your business, and all your different stakeholders to, to make this happen. Now, we are really excited about this because we cannot cover all the patterns that possibly exist within your landscape. So the new patterns that would come up, we can definitely capture it in the, in the work that we closely do with you. And we would be able to you know, bubble it up and publish it. Or if it is very specific to you, then you would be able to take it over and run with it as well. So we are very excited about it. Now, before I close, the last uh, one I want to really highlight is the business use cases. While we talked about all the technical capabilities of BTP and AWS, we also have a lot of business use cases that you can readily run with, which underlying it leverages all the architecture that we talked about. And uh, these, uh, you, the QR codes over here will redirect you to the Discovery Center mission, where it will give you step-by-step -step guide on spinning out instances and the step that you need to follow to have this application up and running. Last but not least, like I said in the beginning of this session, there's a lot of details and nuances to all the, uh, all the information I shared with you. If you are interested, please go search for SAP AWS Joint Reference Architecture, and it will guide you to all the different blogs and all the Discovery Center missions that will help you to implement it in your landscape. With that, we can open up for a question. We have two more minutes to go.